Hey everyone, this is Peter from Kanto Tech. And for this video, we're going to talk about one very special thing here with me right now. And that's the Intel NUC9 Extreme Kit. Now for those not too familiar with this kind of PC, it's a mini ITX PC of some sort. And the NUC stands for Next Unit of Computing. Ever since the NUC was launched last 2013, Intel had one goal in mind to fulfill the needs of those looking for desktop class power at a smaller form factor, similar to an ITX PC. The early barebone NOCs used laptop processors, laptop hard drives, integrated graphics, basically everything that the laptop would also have and try to put it in a ITX form factor such as this. They were, however, relatively easier to upgrade and a whole lot easier to, to build compared to a regular PC. NUCs were built to be cheap, convenient, relatively low power, and also low noise devices. However, through the years, there's always been one issue about the NUCs which consumers have been complaining about, and that's always about the price. Now, you'd assume that those tiny PCs would also have smaller price points, right? But no, Intel always put a, more of a premium on these kinds of devices. So I can think of two reasons why Intel would do that. Number one is that it's a very niche product. And number two, since they weren't selling as fast or um, as mainstream as the other components that Intel was producing in the market, it was also more costly to produce. Given that, here comes the Intel NUC9 Extreme Kit, which is a very different NUC compared to the ones that Intel has been producing for the past seven years. A revolutionary step for Intel, it, fe it features a very, very different kind of component. And that's it here. This is the com Intel Compute Element. So as you can see here, it already shows here what CPU is inside because there is a CPU inside this particular device. Basically, it's sort of a PC within a PC, but not really. Some people are saying that because there is a CPU inside, there is a DRAM inside, there's also storage inside, and at the back of it is something sort of like a motherboard. But technically, it's not really a full PC because you would still need uh, a barebone kit like this to be able to actually use this compute element here. And it's the first time actually that Intel has decided to go for the modular step. Previously, the Inox were not really meant to be taken apart piece by piece and replaced part by part. Uh, when the earlier NOCs had the CPUs broken, you had to uh, replace the entire thing, right? But now, if your CPU is broken or you just want to upgrade uh, your DRAM or your storage, you just need to open this up or replace it completely if you want a new CPU. So this compute element we have here is, has the Core i5 9th gen 9300H processor, which is also a laptop processor. And Intel has chosen specifically not to put desktop CPUs here in this kind of devices, precisely because number one, there's too much heat. Number two, it will take too, too much power, which this overall system cannot possibly uh, handle. So if your NUC comes with a i5 kit and then a few years into the future, you'd want to upgrade it into an i9 or an i7 processor, it's actually much easier because what you just need to do is replace this compute element here with the i9 or i7 version. And one thing to note here is that it is relatively easier to upgrade compared to a desktop CPU. Because when you upgrade desktop PCB CPUs, you would also need to upgrade the motherboard. But if you uh, replace it with the compute element here, the motherboard is actually here in the compute element itself. What you put here in the bare bones kit is actually just a baseboard which uh, this the, the PCIe connectors will connect to. So we're going to take a closer look into the this Intel Nook 9 Extreme kit given to us by PCWorks. So actually this model was just a bare bones kit. It didn't actually include the GPU, the SSD, the DRAM. So it only included the case, the baseboard, and the compute element here. So for the pricing for this model, I'll put it down in the link below or in the caption below. And for this review, PCWorks actually put in already a Palette GTX 1660 Ti, 16GB of DRAM in a single module, and also a 256GB SSD. And we've already done some testing using that configuration, we'll show you in the next few minutes.
Overall, would I recommend the Intel NUC9 Extreme Kit? Um, I can say that for some users, it might be a good solution if you're looking for a PC that doesn't really take up so much space, but something that's also easily upgradable in the future. And you can also uh, you know, do your daily tasks or do some gaming in it. One thing that's very good about this is you can actually put in a full-size GPU in it, a single fan GPU basically. And there are also some solutions in the market already out here. So for example, Razer already is using the Intel compute element in their bare bone kit as well. And in Razer's case, they actually made the case much longer to be able to accommodate uh, much longer graphics cards. I was thoroughly impressed at the gaming, gaming performance and also the real life performance on the Intel NOC9 Extreme kit or at least this configuration, right? So it's fast, it's quiet, and the temperatures were actually pretty acceptable as well. That's compared to a notebook solution or a configuration similar to this, but in a notebook form. But then again, there will always be some comparisons to a full-size desktop PC, which you can you know, put bigger fans or put some water cooling in. Definitely that solution would be bigger and much faster and might be a bit more a bit less expensive as well however at the end of the day it would probably not be as tiny as this so definitely even though i would recommend the intel nook 9 extreme it all still would boil down to how much is the budget for the consumer the intel nook 9 extreme is a bit on the expensive side but given that it is also a fantastically great approach of intel to go on the modular direction for the intel nucs that way, end users can be able to upgrade in the future or put different things the way ITX PCs are meant to be done. So again, great job to Intel for doing that. And I think it's even more exciting to see that since this is just the first iteration that Intel has done this kind of setup for uh, the Intel Nook. It's also interesting to consider what they are planning next for the future of this device. Again, this is Peter from Cantotech. And if you like this video, be sure to check out our YouTube and our Facebook and like and subscribe to those channels. So I'll see you all soon in our next video. Bye!